If you're going to spend 110 and 120 pounds respectively on some truly wireless in-ears, you'd really hope that they stick in your ears no matter what, sound incredible, have all-day battery life, and be nice and comfortable too. But these skull candy ones just don't. Let me run you through them, but first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So what have we got here then? Well, we have the 110 pound Indie Fuels, which are essentially AirPod clones, including with an AirPod style case. And then we have the 120 pound Push Ultras. These are their sports headphones with an IP67 rating to keep all your sweat out, rather than the IP55 that the Fuels have. Both come with wireless charging cases, although both do have USB Type-C ports for fast charging if you'd prefer, although the Push Ultras have a much larger case by comparison. Now let's start with the worst offender, the Push Ultras. These are massive. Not only is the case, like I said, huge, but the actual headphones themselves are too. The moldable support that can hold onto your ear, that's pretty thick. And the actual earbud is absolutely massive and honestly just reminds me of the Family Guy sketch of a grandpa pill. Now, the actual ear tip that come on these resembles an air or ear pod in that it's a sort of sloped shape and it's a fairly fixed design. In fact, it's so fixed that despite it being a silicon tip, you can't change it out. The size of you, what you see here is the size you get and you just have to hope that your ear canal lets these things in and in my case they don't. These do not fit in my ears, they will not sit into my ear canal at all which means that they don't create a seal and out goes any hope of any level of sound quality. These don't stay in my ears at all and even with the moldable strap that just about keeps it on my ears but definitely not in them. I can't imagine actually running with these personally as these will not stay on my head just sat down. So running, cycling, or doing any level of activity, I can imagine these getting lost very quickly. Now they do have three buttons, one of which is on the large face and two of them are the plus minus buttons on the edge. But the problem with them is that they're coated in silicon for waterproofing and they're really quite stiff, which means that when you do try and adjust something in your ear, you will inevitably either pull the earphone out or need to use one or two hands to make any adjustments, which isn't gonna be an option when doing any level of sporting activity, running, cycling, or whatever. Like I mentioned about the case, it's pretty big. In fact, I would say it's too big for a set of wireless headphones. Now, of course, these being sport headphones, you might leave a case behind, but still to fit this in your pocket is gonna be more of a pain than a more standard AirPod style case. And the thing is that they've also made it remarkably difficult to just get the damn headphones in. It's quite a process you have to drop them in at the perfect angle and then twist them in and then they'll go. And the thing is that the moldable ear tips, you have to unmold them from the shape that you had them on your ears just to fit it back in the case. And then there's the sound quality. Partially because these don't fit in my ears and partially because, well, they're waterproof skull candies, these sound dreadful. I actually gave these to my partner and she said that they sounded very far away. And she's right. They sound distant, they sound compressed, and they sound like you're listening through water. And that's not a great experience when you're paying £120 for a set of headphones, sports ones or not. So the sports ones are naff, but maybe the smaller, more standard ones are better. Well, yes and no. They are a much more comfortable fit thanks to their much more standard AirPod style design with silicon ear tips and even a silicon uh, in-ear support that holds them in remarkably well. You even get a small selection of different sized ear tips and supports in the box so that you can fit them to your ears. And in my experience with them, they held in remarkably well. I didn't have one fall out at any point and even while keeping active and in motion, they didn't fall out. In fact, my glasses were quicker to fall off than the headphones were. That bodes well for using these in you know, activity while keeping active, even if the IP rating isn't quite as good as the sports ones. The sound quality is better too. These have a pretty reasonable profile across the board. They do sound a little compressed and a little lacking in detail and clarity, especially in the bass, which since these are skull candies, 
Yes, the bass is turned up a little bit more than I would like, which only ends up ex accentuating the lack of clarity in the bass itself, which is a bit of a catch-22. You do get quite the array of controls available on these headphones, thanks to the two touch-sensitive pads, one per headphone, and so much so that uh, Skullcanny included a cheat sheet in the box, which you will have to take a picture of and memorize, because there's a lot of different commands. The number of times I double press instead of triple, activated the Google Assistant, or uh, set it into ambient mode, which then immediately screeched into my ears like putting a microphone into an amplifier, is unbelievable, but it is nice that it is reasonably simple and reasonably responsive. The quoted battery life for the Indie Fuels is 30 hours, six of which come from the headphones themselves, and then another 24 from the case. And like I said, you can either use the USB-C port on the bottom to fast charge it, or use it with a wireless charger instead to keep them topped up. But the thing is though, that for 110 pounds, I can't help but wanting a bit more. Maybe not quite battery life, that's pretty standard, but especially when it comes to sound quality, having something that I would describe as a passable listening experience would be fine if these cost £50, but for £110? I'm not so sure. If you're looking for better audio quality from some TWS buds, then there are a number of better options in the market, including these, the One More TWS buds. Uh, these are actually a couple years old now, although there are a newer generation pair which sound even better than the already phenomenal sound of these ones, and much better than the Indie Fuels, for £30 less. If you want some sports headphones instead, then there are a number of other options as well, including these ultra cheap 35 pound Chinese brand, which sound just as good, if not better technically, since they actually fit in your ears, than the Push Ultras. For a third of the price, they're just as secure, have the same pretty much battery life, so there are a lot better options. The point I'm making isn't that you should go and buy those two specific sets of headphones, it's that the TWS bud market is incredibly crowded, and these skull candy ones just don't seem to stand out to me. They seem to be relatively overpriced for what you're getting in terms of sound quality, and especially in terms of the, the Push Ultras, the sports headphones, they seem to be for a very specific, quite large-eared market, that I don't seem to be a part of. And yes, I know that Apple's AirPods cost £160 for the standard version or £250 for the Pros, but that's not really an excuse. You have to be making something better than the AirPods and definitely better than the much cheaper competition, which right now, I just don't think these are. Maybe if you could pick these up for £50 or so, they'd be a pretty good, a pretty good buy, but for the price they're at right now, I just can't overly recommend them. But of course, a lot about reviewing anything audio is that a lot of this is subjective. Like I said, the, my main concern with the Push Ultras is that they don't fit in my ear canals, and so if you have them, and if they do fit in yours, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below, and the same goes for the Indie Fuels. Do these sound better than other options you have, especially if you already have them, or do they just seem like something you wouldn't bother picking up and you'd go with a, a cheaper, potentially better option instead? Anything at all, do let me know in those comments down below. Now, I will leave a link to both of these in the description down below that you can check out. That'll be on Amazon Affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store. We can see pricing when and where you watch this because it can and does vary. There's also going to be a load of other links in the description you can check out from affiliate links for people like Overclockers UK or merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one, VPN options and a load of other stuff too. There's also a load of other videos that you can check out. I'll try and remember to leave either the One More or the Holly High Buds um, on the end card so you can kind of compare, but that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, do feel free to leave those in the comments down below, but otherwise we'll see you all in the next video.